welcome to this video on power function curve which is also a part of six sigma matrix in internal quality control so in this video we are going to see how to use power function curves as a part of qc planning or to determine the qc frequency using the power function curve so before that we will see how to use normalized operator specification chart to determine the QC frequency or how to use normalized operator specification chart in QC planning. So consider this normalized specification chart which is shown here. Here you can see the two lines. One correspond to the three sigma matrix and the other correspond to the six sigma matrix. Here if you see the area above the three sigma line corresponds to the poor performance or unacceptable performance whereas the area below the six sigma lines corresponds to the world class performance and the area between these two lines corresponds to the acceptable performance which is not up to the mark but still can be considered as acceptable performance. So we are going to use this normalized operator specification chart to determine the QC frequency or for the planning of internal quality control. So for all practical purpose we use this type of normalized OP specs charts for the 90% detection limit. So what are all these terminologies we will also see and you can see here some slanting lines more in between the two major lines and this each line corresponds to the QC rule or a QC plan. Here you can see the key which corresponds to the each of the line in this OP specs charts and which will form a individual QC plan, individualized QC plan for our specific condition. So for this let us consider the same example again where the cholesterol the medical decision limit is 200 mg per DL total allowable error is 20 mg per dl, standard deviation is 4 mg per dl and bias is 2 mg per dl. As per this the x coordinate will be 20 and the y coordinate will be 10 as the calculation we have seen already. Now we have to plot these two points on the normalized operator specification chart. So draw a line from x coordinate which is 20 parallel to the y axis and a line parallel to the x axis from the y coordinate the intersecting point is the operator point for the cholesterol. So now for this operating point of cholesterol we need to find out the optimum frequency of QC runs as well as the rules which we are going to use for the QC planning. So for that purpose let us see the key for this operator specification chart which we will use for this interpretation of this operating point. So now if you can see this operating point falls between these two lines. So as per this first line the number of controls required is 4 and number of runs required is 1 with a probability of false rejection will be 0.04 or 4%. And if you see the second line number of controls required will be 2 and the number of runs required will be 1 with a probability of false rejection is 0.03 or 3%. For both the cases the rule followed will be 1 2.5s that means one control measurement exceeds plus or minus 2.5s limits is a rejection rule. So similarly even for other analyte operator specification point can be plotted on normalized operator specification chart and the number of QC runs required and the number of QCs required with the probability of false rejection and rules which needs to be followed can be find out with the help of this key. Now let us understand in short what are the components of this key. So first of all this N is the number of controls required, R is the number of runs required. If you see here there is P with small f and r that means the probability of false rejection of a QC run and if you see this these are basically the Q 
QC rules which needs to be followed for a particular line corresponding operator specification point lies. So now we will see about power function curve. How these power function curves are used for the QC planning and to determine the frequency of QC run with error detection and or false rejection of QC runs. Power function curves are basically QC selection tools where the probability of error detection is on the y axis whereas the size of systemic error is on the lower x axis and the sigma quality is on the upper y axis. It you can see some power curves and each of these power curve represents different QC procedures whose control rules are identified in the key which is shown here separately. Lines from top to bottom in this key represents QC rules and number of control measurement top to bottom. The systematic error on lower x axis is in the multiples of s and is determined by using the formula that uses total allowable error, bias and precision. The formula for critical systematic error is equal to total allowable error minus bias divided by standard deviation and subtracting 1.65 from the calculation. This formula total allowable error minus bias divided by SD is equal to sigma matrix. So it will be substituted in this equation. So the systematic error becomes sigma matrix minus 1.65. So basically the sigma in this power function curve will be equal to medically systematic error plus 1.65. So whenever we plot a sigma matrix in this power function curve, it will be rescaled in terms of sigma by adding 1.65 to the value of systematic error. We will see it with the help of a example. So again we will see the example of cholesterol as we have already seen. The sigma matrix for this was 2.33. So we are going to plot this sigma matrix on the sigma scale of the on the upper x axis. So the sigma matrix of cholesterol which is 2.33 is the x coordinate of the upper x axis and from which a perpendicular line will be drawn on the lower x axis which will be parallel to the y axis. So the, from this the size of systematic error comes around 0.8. Now to consider the key or to use it as a statistical quality control tool consider the key where for each curve you will get a separate a separate key which will have a separate set of rules with number of controls and number of runs along with the probability of false rejection and probability of error detection. So for the probability of false rejection if it is 0.03 the probability of error detection can be find out by the intersecting point of power function curve with the vertical line which is drawn from the sigma scale on the upper x axis up to the systematic error of the lower x axis. So this will yield the probability of error detection 0.1. So this is how the power function curve are used to determine the probability of error detection as well as the probability of false rejections with the help of sigma matrices which can be calculated from the total allowable error bias and SD. So now if you see in this key the power curve which is intersecting the particular line in the power function curve and the same line in the key you will find out for the probability of false rejection 0.03 and the probability of error detection around 12% which is very low. The number of QCs required will be 2 and the number of runs required will be 1 and the QC rule which will be followed will be 2.5 S. 
सो दिस इज हाउ द पावर फंक्शन कर्व्स आर यूज एज अ स्टैटिस्टिकल क्वालिटी कंट्रोल टूल टू प्लान द क्यू सी फ्रीक्वेंसी रन एंड टू डिटरमाइन द फॉल्स रिजेक्शन एज वेल एज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एरर डिटेक्शन नाउ वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट इन दिस पावर फंक्शन कर इज हाउ दिस पावर फंक्शन कर आर डिटरमाइंड और हाउ दे हैव बीन डिराइव दे आर बेसिकली डिराइव फ्रॉम द थियरी देर आर टू थियरीज वन बाय प्रोबेबिलिटी थियरी एंड द सेकेंड वन इज बाय कंप्यूटर सिमुलेशन एक्चुअली वी आर नॉट गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल्स हाउ दिस पावर फंक्शन कर आर डिटरमाइंड वी मे हैव अ सेपरेट क्लास ऑन द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस पावर फंक्शन कर डेरीवेट derivation from the probability theory in some separate class so that's all for this video and we will close this video for now the other details of the upcoming videos we will see in the next video thank you